Hi, uh, this is Calvin with Red Twig Nursery. Today I'm just uh, processing some Teg Bark Hickory nuts. In this video, I'm just going to show you how I remove the husk from the nut and then um, how we store them. We're either planting in the spring next year or sending out to people um, as seeds just to grow themselves. And then we'll also go through like how we dry them to eat them just for ourselves our own personal use and then I'll just show like what you can expect uh, if you grow these from seed um, yourself. Most of these nuts are from uh, a cemetery actually that had a bunch of um, mature shagbark hickory trees. That's a pretty common place that I find them around my area but uh, some other places where I go to collect them are like just parks roadsides along like recreational trails. Cemeteries just seem to have a lot of these around uh, this area. The trees kind of vary like th these are pretty large nuts that I'm I'm used to seeing here um, but there's also some smaller ones. You can just see the size difference there. Um, I mean these trees are growing like right next to each other. That's kind of the difference that you'll see. Um, when I'm looking for when I'm trying to find a good tree to harvest from I usually just try to find one with a large nut and produce a lot of seeds that are viable. Um, so the first step is just to uh, remove the all the husks from all the nuts that you've collected. Um, so now I'm just going to get started like removing all the husks and putting the seeds in one bucket and uh, the husks which will just compost in another bucket. Okay so now I've gone through about a quarter of my uh, bucket and I've removed all the husks uh, from about from enough shells to like enough nuts to like cover the bottom of this uh, little pot. Um, so now what I'm going to do is uh, fill this with rainwater, about half full, um, just to float off all of the um, nuts that aren't viable or um, the seed inside just hasn't developed properly. So I filled the pot up with some. Um, rainwater and of all the seeds that I went through just now um, only about five are floating so these ones that are floating are um, they probably just don't have a seed that's developed enough to fill out the shell or there's just like a rotten nut inside or seed inside um, but the ones that are all su that sunk to the bottom uh, those are all good we can either eat those or store them to plant next year or, or give them away or sell them to other people so these five nuts floated, so I'm just going to add them to the husk, the, bu the bucket with all the husks in them. Um, and we're just going to compost this. Um, usually I'd probably just go through the whole bucket and process all of them at once and then do the float test um, all at once. But uh, just for the sake of this video, I'm just doing a little bit at a time. So then obviously if you're planning to eat these and not store them for planting, after you do the float test and you um, have your good nuts uh, sorted, um, you basically just take your nuts and you dry them out. You can dry them on like a baking tray, just like in a cool dry area, or like in an onion sack near like a wood stove or some sort of heat source. Um, you don't want to like overheat them, but a little bit of heat can help dry them out a little bit. If you have a lot more nuts to store, I use these boxes. They're called air prune boxes. The idea for them is not mine. Uh, I got it from another uh, two great great nurseries which I'll link in this video. Um, basically they're just these wooden frames using really old, just some old scrap wood uh, with a hardware mesh bottom. This one needs some repairs uh, as you can see. Those will work really well and then you just basically uh, pour all the nuts you have into them and then cover them either with like another box another air prune box on top to keep out the uh, like rodents and stuff um, or you can just cover it with like something temporarily like a like a window screen or just something to cover the top so nothing's going into it that works or something like it um, something that allows airflow like one of those crates from the that, that supermarkets use or just any sort of like like a, I'm thinking of like a shopping basket type material. Those work too. So now I'm going to take these good nuts and store them in a five gallon bucket. Um, I've already started this bucket here. Um, 
oh, important things to know, I guess, about the bucket is it's got holes in the top to allow for drainage and airflow and everything like that. And it also has uh, holes in the bottom too. Same thing, just for drainage. And uh, the way um, the way I do it is uh, at the bottom of the bucket. When I first start a new bucket, I'll put like a layer of wood chips or this is sawdust that I got from a firewood processor got for free you can also use wood chips or like sand or coconut coir maybe even like perlite maybe like charcoal but yeah so you start with a, a shallow layer of that at the bottom of the bucket and then you just add like about enough seeds to cover that sawdust layer or that wood chip layer and then you just add another layer of of uh, sawdust on top of that, and then you just keep going. So basically this is sawdust, and then seeds, sawdust, seeds, and so on until I get to the top and fill it up. Um, so that's what I'm going to do now. I have this, this one is one I started before. This bucket is carrying uh, American hazelnuts in the bottom and 470 hickory nuts, Karya avada. Um, above that. So I'm just going to continue that and I'll label it when I'm done so I know what I have uh, next year or later this fall when I'm filling seed orders and stuff like that. Alright, so I have counted and put all the nuts in this layer uh, that I had just started beforehand and then now I'm just going to add sawdust on top of it. Okay, so I added a layer of sawdust on top or wood shavings I guess you, you should probably say what these are. So then now this one still has some space in Above it, I could probably fit like one more layer of nuts here, so I'm just going to cover it for now, and then uh, I'll continue adding nuts as I go. So then, once you've filled up your container, which doesn't have to be this big, it doesn't have to be five gallons, it could be like three gallons or just one, it could be like a small yogurt container that you store over the winter, but um, for now, I've got this full bucket, and I'm going to put it temporarily until later in the fall, I'm just going to store this in here, which is a chicken coop, which I have not yet made the jump to getting chickens, but for now I'm just using it as like a seed storage area. Um, so this will do fine because it's it's shaded, it's dark in here, there's good ventilation with the hard hardware mesh bottom. Before late fall, I'm just going to keep all of these seeds in here, just protected from squirrels and stuff. But once I have like all this, my seeds processed for the year, um, I'm going to use this trench that I dug, which is sort of like a fire pit, biochar char processing space. I'm just going to put all my buckets in here and cover them with wood chips. And I also might put like a chicken wire fencing over, over the buckets before I bury them in wood chips, just to add some extra protection to protecting from like squirrels and chipmunks and stuff like that. So just to show you what that looks like, um, this is a bucket of seeds that I stored earlier uh, this summer from fruits that ripen a, little, a lot earlier than these, uh, these nuts. So I'll just try to show how I basically buried it um, into the ground and then covered it with wood chips. This is basically how I um, stratify almost all of my seeds, uh, just in buckets like this. Basically I just leave, this, leave these buckets out here uh, until early spring when I dig them all up and plant out them in like, um, I do all my seeds in, in like raised nursery beds, um, but you could also plant them in containers or whatever um, sort of configuration you want. Uh, I'll probably add more wood chips to this one in particular. If you're interested in what to expect uh, if you're growing these from seed, um, this over here is a bed, it's a really small bed of um, Shag bark hickory with some weeds in it, uh, violets. I mean, this is probably what you, you, you're going to expect for a typical uh, context. This is like a raised nursery bed. And you can see this one's kind of nibbled on, but that's probably about five or six inches tall. This one's probably about five or six inches tall. Um, these all probably are between four and six inches. And that's probably all to, you can really expect for one year. I'm not sure. I think they can get up to about 18 inches in their second year. Um, we're going to sell the ones that are healthy and taller and um, just keep the ones that are a little bit like damaged like this one. 
to grow out for another year and eventually to sell or to plant permanently somewhere as part of an orchard or someone's garden or something like that. So if you're interested in growing uh, shag bark hickory nuts from seed, uh, trees from seed, uh, hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If you're interested in buying any of our uh, seeds that we've collected this uh, season, um, I'll leave a link to our uh, nursery shop page below, our Etsy page. We're also selling shagbark hickory uh, seedlings that we've grown this year. Um, this is just some of the ones that we have, in, in case you don't want to wait a season to have a tree. But yeah, uh, it's a slow growing tree, but I mean, it's like the best tasting nut out there, and the wood is like pretty much the best when it comes to timber that's hard and flexible. It's also really good for smoking meats and other things. So, all right, thank you.